the appellation Brothers of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mount Carmel, and the name Order of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, conferred a distinctive quality on the Carmelite order and the Carmelite way of living. Since the first temple of Our Lady had been built on Mount Carmel near the fountain of the prophet Elijah, the order had been venerating the Virgin. Hence, their motto became, the entire Carmel is Our Lady's. This veneration consolidated when the Virgin bestowed her motherly protection upon the order and helped it under the dire circumstances of their transfer from Mount Carmel in the east to the hermitages of the west. When the monks felt weary and threatened by the danger of seeing their order disappear, the superior, St. Simon Stock, implored the Virgin so she would protect his order, who considered her a mother and a patron. On July 16, 1251, the Virgin appeared to St. Simon Stock while he was praying and handed him the Carmelite scapular, saying, This blessing is for you and your children after you. He who dies wearing this scapular shall never see the fires of hell, but shall win eternal salvation. When the monks knew about the blessing, they were in seventh heaven. They venerated the Virgin even more, for she became their sister, mother, patron, protector, and the Lady of Carmel. The monks wanted to spread the veneration of the scapular among secular people, but this required an authorization from the church. The Virgin took care of the matter and hence appeared in 1322 to Pope John XXII, who was still cardinal back then. She gave him good news about his election for the Holy See and asked him to authorize and confirm the veneration of the scapular and the privilege of Saturday in favor of the Carmelites. The worshipping of the scapular spread among people, kings and popes. The Virgin appeared several times throughout the years to monarchs and spiritual leaders to save the Carmelites in moments of danger and difficulty. We shall see together where and how all that happened after we look at the history and the foundation of the Carmelite order, its spirituality, its spreading in Lebanon and its saints, three of them who had been declared doctors of the church by the Vatican. At the end, we shall expose the meaning of the Saturday privilege given by the Mother of Carmel to all individuals and families around the world. The Carmelite Order borrowed its name from Mount Carmel near the city of Haifa in Palestine. It is there where the Order was given birth and where the Prophet Elijah spent a great deal of his life offering his sacrifice to God. The Prophet used to isolate himself in a cave near a fountain that carries his name until our present day. The Carmelite Order attributed its foundation to the Prophet Elijah, and this attribution is purely spiritual. The Order is the fruit of a hermitage tradition which considered the Prophet Elijah an ideal and the Virgin Mary, Lady of Mount Carmel, a companion, a sister, a patron, a mother, a defender, and a model of the Christ to follow, to unite with God. That's why the Carmel is a spirit long before becoming an order and a spiritual school before multiplying as congregations and orders in the whole world. At the beginning, the Carmelites were hermits who lived in grottos and huts at the foot of Mount Carmel, isolated and devoted to meditation. At the dawn of the 13th century, their number multiplied, so they thought about organizing their monastic life to give it an official and defined character. They turned to the papal delegate St. Albert, Patriarch of Jerusalem, who proposed in 1209 a fundamental and primal law that included 18 articles which summarized a lifestyle. This law constitutes, until now, the Order's principal legislation based on isolation, prayer, and simplicity, in addition to meditating the Word of God and venerating the Virgin Mary, symbolized by the cloud that appeared to the Prophet Elijah on Mount Carmel. In 1226, Pope Honorius III enacted a papal bull concerning this law, endorsed in 1229 by Pope Gregorius IX.
However, the persecutions and harassments that the Carmelites had to suffer from non-Christians compelled most of them to head to the West in 1238. Hence, they spread among Sicily, England, Holland, Ireland, and other countries. Upon a visit to Mount Carmel, the King of France, Louis IX, felt highly impressed by the monk's life and spirituality, so he took six of them with him to France in 1245 and gave them shelter near Paris. Twenty years later, the Council of Lyon allowed them to settle down in Europe, provided they accomplish a mission inside the community. Consequently, the Carmelites had to attend universities and most of them became priests, preachers and spiritual guides without abandoning their primal calling, which is life that revolves around meditation and prayer. The Carmelite order spread in Europe and the number of its monasteries reached 150, thanks to the blessings and the protection of the Virgin Mary in each and every crisis the order faced. From that moment on, the Carmelite order embraced all at once meditation and apostolic work, the isolated life and the urban monastic one, the Eastern heritage and the Western acquisitions. The spreading continued and the 14th century was witnessing a huge progress in sciences. However, the 15th century brought with it the plague that exterminated one-third of the Western population. The impact was enormous on the religious orders in the sense that the number of monks went downhill and the callings shrank, whereas those who stayed alive had been affected physically and morally. This pushed Pope Eugene IV to sign the famous attenuation decree in which he called for the softening of the old law, especially with regards to fastening and abstinence. Although the modified law preserved the primal percept which was the permanent focus on the divine presence, the latter was often neglected despite the numerous attempts to begin a reform. The greatest reform of the Carmelite order took place one century later with St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross. It was upon the determination of these two saints whom the Holy See announced later doctors of the Roman Catholic Church that the order of the Barefoot Friars of the Virgin Mary Our Lady of Mount Carmel was founded. It consisted of two branches the Carmelite Barefoot Fathers and the Carmelite Barefoot Enclosed Nuns and other legal secular associations endowed with spirituality and Carmelite books. The main aim of this Theresian reform was to return to the first spirit, to the character of isolation and retreat, along with the renovation of the apolistic spirit within the souls of the monks and nuns. The reform expanded from Spain to Rome, France, Lebanon, Palestine, and other countries. Eagerness prompted many souls to join the holy orders within the Carmelite circle, including famous women and royalties who left their castles and riches to wear the Carmelite attire and enter the walls of poor monasteries, like Madame Louise de la Vallière, Madame Acari, Madame Louise de France, daughter of King Louis XV. With the outbreak of the intellectual revolution in Europe and the French Revolution, the entire Carmelite order in its male and female sections suffered all kinds of oppression and suppression. The monks and nuns were ordered to abandon the monasteries, which left them one alternative besides execution, exile or renouncement. The majority of the monks chose not to give up their faith and consequently became victims of the revolution. One of the most poignant scenes was that of 16 Carmelite nuns. They were arrested and executed in Thorn Square in Paris for the mere fact that they refused to abandon the convent and insisted on recognizing and remaining passionately devoted to Christ. They were hanged on July 17, 1794. The Carmelites renovated their monasteries several times, 
and had to face misery, expulsion and death all over Europe time and time again. They were bound to endure all this until the beginning of the 20th century, when the Providence intervened to protect the order indirectly through the Vatican's announcement in 1900 of the beatification of two Carmelite martyrs, Dennis and Redempt. On May 27, 1906, the 16 martyr nuns were beatified. In 1923, Saint Teresa of Lisieux was also beatified, then sanctified in 1925. In 1926, the Vatican announced St. John of the Cross, Doctor of the Catholic Church. All this echoed intensely in the Carmelites' souls. They gathered new momentum and began planning again for the future of the Order and the apostolic activity. Hence, the Order headed for new horizons in America, the Far East and Africa. The year 1643 marked the entry of the Carmelites to Lebanon. However, historians confirm that they had several monasteries in Lebanon, in Sidon, Tyre, Tripoli, in the 13th century before the defeat of the Crusaders. All these monasteries had been burned and destroyed completely during the Arab conquest of the remains of the Crusaders' kingdom. At the time, the Carmelites had introduced the veneration of the Virgin Mary to Lebanon. Father Prospero had headed to the east with a mission to restore Mount Carmel and bring back the order to its land of origin. He founded a monastery in Aleppo in 1627, then in Mount Carmel in 1631. When the Maronite Patriarch Jirius Botrus Omeira heard about the Carmelite monks' apostolic zeal and devotion and of their good deeds, especially in guiding people to God and his church, he sent for them to come to Lebanon to educate the Maronite monks and help the Christians who were burdened with the Turkish rule. He also wanted them to reinforce the spiritual education of the Maronite people and consolidate the monastic life. On March 18, 1643, Father Celestino, Father Augustine and Friar Carlos arrived to Lebanon. Upon their arrival in Canubin, headquarters of Patriarch Kaumeira, Maronites from all the neighboring villages gathered to welcome them. The Patriarch himself humbly knelt before them, urging them to give him their blessing, and offered them St. Elias Monastery, which they inhabited while restoring and expanding it. The following day, on March 19th, Father Celestino celebrated the Holy Mass on St. Joseph's Day. Likewise, the Carmelites kept on spreading the veneration of the Virgin Mary, Lady of Mount Carmel, who also holds the name of Lady of the Scapular. They also spread the imploring and intercession of Saint Joseph and helped the inhabitants of Sharri to defeat the Metwalis in 1761 in a battle fought in the name of the Virgin Mary, Lady of Mount Carmel. They always stood by the side of the people of Sharri and supported them in defending their land from the successive attacks of their neighbors. Since Father Celestino mastered the Arabic language, he was able to translate the Bible and the Imitation of Christ, both published in Arabic in Rome in 1671. The Carmelites also spread the teachings of Saint Teresa of Avila and put the laws of the Carmelite order under the disposition of the Maronite orders, which regarded them as a source of inspiration for their own laws. In 1695, St. Elias Monastery morphed into the cradle of the first official Maronite order. In compliance with the wishes of Patriarch Stefan Dwehi, the Carmelites remained six more years in the monastery to educate the Maronite monks. In 1701, they moved from the valley to eastern Pshari and inhibited St. Sarkis's monastery that village lords offered them. The monks renovated this old abandoned monastery progressively, the last stage of which was completed in 1862, as one can read on the entry. Today, the monastery has become Jubran Khalil Jubran's cemetery and museum. 
The diaries of some monks mention the fact that Gibran used to come to visit them in the monastery, particularly the artist monks. Their influence on his work is pretty obvious, especially in the description of the Christ. The Carmelites' meditative spirit, which influenced and deeply marked Gibran, made him distinguish and favor the monks over the clergymen whom he criticized harshly. His affection for the Carmelites prompted him in 1926, while he was in New York, to buy St. Sarkis's monastery and its land so that they be his final resting place. St. Sarkis's monastery was a spiritual, artistic, medical, and agricultural center. The Carmelite fathers used to establish in each of their monasteries pharmacies that were more like dispensaries meant to treat patients in a community where no health insurance could have been found. Their care for the body and spirit went side by side with their concern for the mind. Thus, schools were founded. The Carmelite missionaries sacrificed a lot for the sake of the Lebanese people and thus became an authority in all fields. In agriculture, for instance, they taught the inhabitants how to plant the seeds they brought with them from the West, like the padre beans, potatoes, chicory, and a variety of grapes. All this eventually encouraged the inhabitants to carry out a land reform, beneficiating at the same time from the Western experience and the abundance of water in the region. The Carmelite monks persevered in their mission in St. Sarkis's monastery for 207 years until they began building their own monastery in the heart of Pshari so that they be closer to its inhabitants. Their church, dedicated to St. Joseph, was beautifully and skillfully designed. In 1909, the dispensary and the school were also transferred to St. Joseph's monastery. The medical service continued until 1927, while the school, today a public school, remained under their supervision until 1964. With the spreading of the Carmelite schools in all the neighboring villages, thanks to the help of the Carmelite sisters, an institute for theological studies was established in 1909 and people who had graduated from it obtained their degrees from Italy.